old do. Morning, Nathan. Afternoon. Afternoon again. Afternoon. We sort of taking it easy these days. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling up the moors at two o'clock in the afternoon. Had a sly fry up, didn't we? We're on Dartmoor again. Hound tour today. We've been there before. And we're here now. We've got several tours to take in today and around this area. We're going to take in a couple of sites. Bowerman's nose, which we've tried to reach before and never made it, didn't we? Yeah. So we're going to end up doing a bit of a walk around this area and then end up there for a wild camp up on Hound Tour. This is the area, Grimm's Pound, and that, where Sherlock Holmes' Hound of the Baskervilles book was based and set. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, Arthur Conan Doyle. Does, I think he, it was inspired by Hound Tour. does in some way explain the name of the... Burger van. The burger van, hound of the basket meals. Anyway, so this is going to be our Dartmoor walk. Another wild camp. Two tarp in it again, isn't it, boy? Yeah, two tarp wild camp. Yeah. Type two. We're going to go and find Bowerman's nose to start with. So uh, let's get on. It's a very popular area of uh, the moors, right like by the roads, this is where all the tourists come. It tends to be, if you see a walk or anything on the telly, it tends to be this sort of area. The only area that featured on the 100 greatest British walks. Once we're in the moors now, we can see this cluster of locks over here, and then just on the edge down there, Bowerman's nose, the elusive Bowerman's nose. I wanted to come here before because my brother Robin has done a painting of Bowerman's nose for me. He gave me for my birthday, which is up on our wall in our front room. So we came here before, me, Nath, and our friend John, and uh, we got fairly lost over there between Hay Tor and Hound Tor in a fern forest. This time, we're gonna be there in a minute. So, get Bowerman's nose done, dusted. Bowman's nose, majestic. There's a legend, a Dartmoor legend. Hey, you happy about that? I don't want to respond because it's always <laughs> negative. <laughs> legend. There's a, a story from Norman time that says the Bowerman refers to Bowman, an archer. He was said to have been a, a mighty hunter and one day him and his team was chasing their quarry when they stumbled upon a witch's coven and even knocked the witch's cauldron over. Furious, the witches decided to punish Bowerman. So the next time he went hunting, one of them turned themselves into a hare and led him in such an exhausted chase that he eventually fell from his horse into a bog. Before he had sunk further than his waist, however, the witch turned him into stone. And the same fate befell his pack of hounds, whose petrified shapes can still be seen on the crest of nearby Hound Tor. There you go. Two uh, legends in one there, Nath. Bowerman, up to his waist, and then the other packs over in Hound Tor there. True story, mate. Bowerman, glad I got to see him. Tell me brother now. And they've been bit by something, reacting to it. It's like the old school computer games you play when you've got three lives. You're a little bit sort of carefree and a little bit sort of frivolous. But the moment you lose one life, you suddenly start to become aware. I went clay pigeon shooting before and I got bit by nine horse flies in close succession. And that was it, game over for me, like, you know. And there he goes, Bowerman. Cheers then, Bowerman. Thanks for having us. Some of you may have noticed that today I'm not carrying my off-spray Atmos. I've gone back to the Alpine Ascent. The main reason being is I'm not carrying all my camera equipment today. It adds a lot of weight and it adds a bit of discomfort, even on a day when the temperatures are more acceptable. Given the heat and the uh, effort involved, I mean, we've only done one tour and we're already dripping with sweat. So the lightweight pack's on, already feeling the benefits. As we go through the day and the night, we'll see if I forgot to pack anything. Nice 
to be in the shade a minute, isn't it, mate? That was hot coming across there. It is red hot, isn't it? But here we are, side of a road in the Manhattan area, and we're at Jay's Grave. Quite a famous sort of area in Dartmoor. Have you ever heard about Jay's Grave? No. Oh, you'll enjoy this, Nath. I've got another Dartmoor legend. Jay's Grave. Mary, or Kitty Jay, who was a young girl who worked on a farm in the Manhattan area. And she was seduced by the sun, and therefore she was thrown out of the house and off of the farm. So she then hung herself. Because it was a suicide, they wouldn't bury her in a church. So they buried her here, where the boundaries of three parishes meet. So no one could claim responsibility of it. She was buried here at this crossway so that the devil couldn't claim her soul and she couldn't return to haunt the living. And this was 200 years ago. But one of the biggest mysteries about this is that for those entire 200 years, there has always been a fresh set of flowers put on the grave. No one claims to know who does it. It's a bit of a mystery, isn't it, Nath? Right, so we're at Bowerman's. We've come to Jay's grave. That's where we are now. We want to go to Honeybag Tour, Chinkro Tour, which is another peakery high point, and Bone Hill Rocks, and then back over to Hound Tour for our camp. If we cut across here to Honeybag Tour, you can look over there, and it looks a bit sort of overgrown. So I think we're going to try cutting out, going for any ferns and things. Nath doesn't want to get bitten. So we're going to take this path up to Natswavy, to Natswavy Manor. And then we're going to come up behind the back of Honeybag Tour and get on that little dotted green line up to Honeybag. That's what we're doing. valley down here that's where we're aiming to get so it seems like we're walking a long way around but cross country it seems a bit laborious so it's all right it's all good mileage we're on a road now walking downhill going meters and meters down when we need to be getting up don't we know yeah but also heading down is good in a way because we're rapidly getting through our water so we need to find some water a stream somewhere normally i just sip at my water but today i'm gulping it well we can hear water just can't see it, it runs under the road private property here that's where we want to get to get the water I wonder if we can get through this field here. Found a way down to the stream. Yeah, here it is. A little bit more. Trev was telling me in the week about these stats on his uh, Sawyer Mini. The amount of water that it filters before its effectiveness sort of comes to an end is incredible. And I think next time, when the MSR comes to its end, I will definitely head down that road because it's a, it is a superior piece of kit as far as its main job, which is filtering water. But the drawback with it is this. How much water have you filtered so far, Trev? About a litre and a half. About a litre and a half, and he's just refilling his uh, bottle again. I've done two litres, all packed again, ready. Done, MSR trail shots gone, and I've been filming this. MSR and Sawyer, you need to somehow join forces or steal each other's ideas and uh, come up with that sort of longevity with the speed of the MSR. And then we've got a product that makes everyone smile. Kind of a grin. Must be for some sort of bovine. You seen this? It's like a lump of granite with a tree sort of grown in it, and you can't tell where. The tree stops and the granite starts. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Well, that's where we've got to get up there, but it's looking a bit ferny. 
There should be a little track somewhere in between Honey Bag Tour and Chinkwell, which is the next one. Keep our eyes peeled for that. shade up here let's talk it out mate so this is honey bag tour we're coming up to it's a beaut god my head is pounding walking up there I can feel my pulse through my top of my head let's say tour back over there Real beaut of a tour, isn't it? Real strange shape. Stands out a mile. Might have seen our video, I've done the astro photography up on that tour. And then me and Nathan John have been over there before. So here we are at the top of Honeybag Tour. It's Nathan. Eating. Eating. That was a slog up there, Nathan, wasn't it? Hot. Fair, wouldn't it? Hot. Got the worst of the climb out of the way for a minute. Not cranberry? No, I'm alright for a minute. No sweaty. Oof. <laughs> Let's have a chill on your sweaty nuts, knife. <laughs> what a day, knife. Yeah. Handsome. Yeah. It's a fair old walk we've done so fast. We're over halfway. Hound tour. Cracking area, isn't How it? How are you new boots? Yeah, they're all right. I know, you've scuffed the out of the toes already. Yeah. <laughs> they are scuffed, aren't they? Do more walking in them, obviously. How does that mean that you scuff the toes up? I don't know. I don't you're drag my been... toes along when I walk. That's the tour we went up, isn't it? With Bumpus. Rip and tour. Yeah. Saddle tour, and that'll be hay tour, and then that's where we come down into the valley to go to hay <laughs> to hound tour. That was an adventure, wasn't it? Some might say adventure, some might say misadventure, some might say misery. <laughs> Balls up. Cheers then, honey bag tour. Moving over now to Chinkwell tour. Another Peakery high point. Now Peakery, it's a good little website. You can sort of tick off all the high points you do, not just on Dartmoor, all over the world. And the chap has now put a, a different sort of mission on there where you can go and just do all the tours on Dartmoor and tick them off. I uh, need to revisit it because I haven't updated it for a long time. We're not too bothered about the tours. We like to see the nice ones, the big ones. We're taking off the 365, but uh, yeah, you should check out Peakery. I'll put a link below. Chinkwell tour, double summits. No, that will calls for, don't we, mate? What does that call for, Trev? Calls for a double summit, mate. Double summit? Double summit. We're going to give it one. I reckon so. Peakery High Point, Chinkwell tour. Summit or nothing! I know I love the bleakness of like the northwest part of Dartmoor, but. This Widdicombe on the moor area is something else. It's absolutely stunning. 
And I think a lot of it is the mixture of trees, seeing more trees, you know, more woodland. I think I need to sort of get out of my stubborn ways and learn to appreciate this area, or other areas of the more, more, you know. Jump in. It looks quite a long way. It just looks like a lot could go wrong. Yeah, I'm not carrying you back. I could carry back to that car park and then go and get the car. I think I'd like to see you do that. Go on then, jump. Don't really. Why not? <laughs> I'm not really carrying you. Some fing friend you are. It's not that high, is it? You're f <laughs> God's sake. No. It's about seven foot. <laughs> He yeah, only bloody done it. Scaffolder, innit? So I couldn't jump that. I can't jump off of this. I'll have to climb down that. I'll just be frightened of doing my ankle in. in that case, isn't he? Bye, Beltor. Bye, bye, Bell. Ba, 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 Bell. Oh, hang on a minute. We've got to the easy bit. Don't you have to carry me now? Wasn't that the agreement? <laughs> I jumped. I told you I wasn't carrying you. There we go, leaving Bone Hill Rocks. Now we've got to cut across to find the road back to Haytel. What do we know? Yeah, oh, he's one is the old inn. Oh, he's looking for a pub. <laughs> We're on about getting back, then driving off to go for a pint, and then coming back and camping. So, <laughs> it's been that hot. We're both like, let's have a pint. <laughs> you can blame us. Ah, oh, so we're on the road now. We've cut across from Bone Hill Rocks, across the moor. Back out on the main road now, or the road. Slog back to the car. It's still warm and it's getting into the evening now. Yeah, the evenings have been warm. Having yeah. a really nice summer. We don't like to complain, do we, Nath? No, no, it's seven o'clock and it's still really hot, isn't it? Heading back to Hound Tour. Where we're gonna set up camp. Another summer wild camp. Yeah. Gonna warm one. Yep. So here we are now, at the foot of Hound Tour. We've had a good old stomp, then we snuck off to Widdicombe on the Moor, had a drink, and a pub meal. Cheated, didn't we, Nave? <laughs> well, we earned it. We did. And then when we were there and we saw people eating. Do you know what we need? Pub meal. And possibly another pint. <laughs> so now we're gonna go and find somewhere to camp. Two top, camping on Hound Tour. Hashtag, what? Hashtag two top camping.
I made a couple of schoolboy errors here. One, I didn't put the front up first, and now it's too low. So it's like I've got crawl to get in and out. It's all right, it's all right. I can still get in and out. Biggest error I've made, I've left me bloody mug at home. Me mug and me spoon. So I'm gonna have to drink my coffee out my jack boil, so I'm gonna have to try and uh, measure the right amount. Because you know what coffees are like when they're not the right consistency. All right, Nath. All right, Bert. How was that? Well, slightly more of a struggle than normal. <laughs> And we've only had two beers, so heaven forbid if we ever actually decide to get drunk and do this. Beautiful evening though, mate, isn't it? Oh, it's handsome, isn't it? It's probably the best evening we've been camping ever. It seems very similar to the evening though we was out under... Is this West... where I ended up sleeping in the car? Yeah, that was a nice evening. Yeah, yeah. You had a shit night. I've got my shawl. Oh, yeah. It's a slight nip in the air, but it's not quite cold enough to actually put a jacket on. <laughs> Too hot. How is the coffee situation working out for you, Trev? <laughs> Just as good as the tart. <laughs> <laughs> what an evening, though, Nafe. Eh? Oh, it's handsome, isn't it? What an evening, what a day. Time. It's been an amazing walk, isn't it? That it has, boy. That it has. What a beautiful spot to pitch up as well, like, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Nice and calm. Beautiful views. Out of a view. Nice valley down there. Is and it? The pool behind us. <laughs> We've been in that valley. We it wasn't that nice. We've briefly been in the valley. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, I want a drink, drink, but I'm scared. <laughs> I can't bring it to my lips. You didn't just film me picking my nose, did you? Well, if you was picking your nose when you was walking towards me, yes. Yeah, well, I've just wiped it down there. It's a bogey stone. Uh, no, Logan stone. Logan stone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've just passed a Logan stone. <laughs> the, these evenings and early mornings, the light that you get for filming is yeah, weird. Yeah, unbelievable, isn't it? Lovely. That's why we do it, Nath, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm not often up early in the morning or late at night, but yeah, it's definitely why. <laughs> <my way. laughs> blows you away, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Lucky. Lucky to be here. Not just lucky to be here, but lucky to have found a motivation in our lives to look for something a little bit more than the four walls within which we live, isn't it? Yeah. And it's addictive, I find. I've noticed. If I haven't gone out for a couple of weeks, I start getting itchy. I'm like, I've got to get out. I love it. Makes you wonder why we bother doing it in early January and late December. <laughs> <laughs> Juniper. Oh, it's Jennifer, isn't it? Is that Astonos? That's your anus, isn't it? Is that my anus? <laughs> it's like the moon I can put. Oh no, it's, it's your head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm horrible, aren't I? It's such a Well, it's ten past eleven, still sitting out outside. It's just lovely and calm, cool. I ain't gonna be up much longer, I'm a bit drowsy. It's a lovely evening, it's really warm. I don't think I'll be getting in my sleeping bag any time soon. Feeling a bit drowsy and lethargic. We did just eat a massive meal and drink pints, so... In the sun has that effect, doesn't it? You might wonder why we do these hikes. Carry all these massive packs on our back. Walk around in a circle and get back to where we started before we get anything out of the pack. <laughs> yeah, we wonder that too. Um, it's training, isn't it? That's what we tell ourselves. Training. We can't do these hikes with these packs on. Who are you? But we, uh, we've got Ben Nevis coming up. If it's really hot, we're on about just day packing it. Just going up, getting the views coming down, and then finding a pub and celebrating the fact that we've done all three peaks. But uh, yeah, you've got that to look forward to. So have we. 12 hour journey to get there, to get up to Scotland, 12 hours. So hopefully Nafe won't be on his high protein diet then, stuck in a little car with Nafe and his gas. You love it. Mm. So it's actually a really clear night out there. It's a shame we didn't bring our cameras. Could have done a bit of astrophotography. We really didn't plan this very well, did we? No, but then do we ever? Oh, 
morning. But it's about half four. The sun's just about to rise and it looks awesome. So I'm going to go and have a look around outside. I don't want to be too noisy because uh, I don't think Nave slept last night. I don't want to wake him up. It was me. That's the tours we went across yesterday in the background there. Let's go see the silly sausage. <laughs> it's only early. Very early. Bye. Morning, Chief. I didn't want to wake you because I didn't know what time we managed to get to sleep. <laughs> oh, it was late. <coughs> oh, very odd to sleep I had. That way, is it? Yeah. Looks like it. Oh, wow. It's twenty past five. <laughs> the sun's up. We're just singing. I'm absolutely knackered. We're not alone on the tour. There's some uh, folk camping over here. Shall I give it a seven or nothing next to him? and make a, a mochaccino. It's my thing. It's his thing as well, eh? He copies me now. Does that every morning as a mocha. Since I shared my uh, mochaccino flask with him on Bob Me Moore, I'm going to have a look at Brown Crop Pit, Brown, Brown, Brown Willy. I've set up a time lapse of the sun coming up over those rocks there, but it hasn't. I think it's gone behind the rocks at an angle. Trappist time lapse I've ever set up waste. The sun's up now. It's hot. Hot. I've packed up the top, you see. But look at this. I managed to get it back in my pack. Nafe's gun is. And he said that's the first time he's done it. And I've done mine as well. So, uh, yeah, good sign, a good omen. What a day. And there you go, like a nomad, my house is on my back. Everything I own, no trace. Take away memories, leave only footsteps. Something like that. 20 past six in the morning, stroll back to the car. We're done, aren't we? Done. Good knife. Yeah, it's probably to do with not having any sleep. <laughs> yeah, I spent a lot of my night dreaming about sweeping up insects. Weird that, isn't it? There's mm. a lot of flying kind of noises and creepy crawlies and shit. I'm pretty sure I got bitten on the ass by something at half past four this morning. I did apologise. I fucking hate camping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, I enjoy it. It's weird, isn't it? Our roles have reversed, haven't they? I feel like I'm getting dragged out now 
against my will. <laughs> but I didn't want to go camping this weekend. I was like, let's just do a day hike. And Trevor's like, no, the weather's nice. You know, we'll only be moaning when it's winter and we want to go out and do one, which is true. I can't help but feel, especially at like one o'clock in the morning when you're still not asleep, you're too hot, you're in and out of your sleeping bag, you can't get comfortable. You're paranoid that everything with more than eight legs is running around underneath you over the top of you and breaking the shit out of you. That maybe being at home in the comfort of my own home, in my bed, having a nice comfortable eight hours sleep would have been preferable. But what do I know? But I enjoyed it. I liked it. The thing that grates on me is the fact that the weather conditions couldn't have been better. It couldn't still have been, been better. To moan about. <laughs> and it still had a shit night's sleep. But it was a lovely area, wasn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. beautiful. And yesterday it was a nice walk. Got two Dartmoor legends in yesterday, didn't I, mate? Yeah. He died a little then. The less, less said about that, the better. Bowman's nose, I always wanted to see that, and now I can say I've been there. The Jay's grave didn't sound like a like a made-up bullshit story about pixies, but most of them complete tosh. I'm definitely going to throw some of our own made-up Dartmoor legends into the mix and see if you people can recognise them as false. Or have we already? Well, I've had a lovely time. Oh yeah, me too. It's been great. <laughs> Now, what you're about to witness is the most cack-handed summit in the Netherlands. <laughs> not too bad. That was actually, that's how we should do it. Right, let's do it back of the hands. Oh, back hands. Oh, that's like... That's how we do it. Mm -hmm. That's how we do it. Got it down, haven't we? Well, I've been Trev. I've been Naif. We've been Summit or Nothing. And I've been generally unhappy. This is idiom. In it. It's just his idiom. Thank you for watching. We'd love it if you comment. We'd love it if you subscribed, if you haven't already. Share. Yeah, share. Our That's stuff. the key to getting new people to see our videos. Sharing. It's not just about getting new people to see our videos. It's about getting people that might not be interested in it right now, getting interested in getting out, getting healthy, getting in shape, and being active. Yeah. So anyway, Arriva Derch. Chase. Chase. Hello. Hi YouTube. Here we are. Some little muffin. I'm Trev. I'm Nathan. And uh, our, our favourite location. This is where it all began. Have a look round. This is Sorton Car Park. Just below Sorton Tour. Yeah. What's on the menu for today, Trev? Well, it's um, just before New Year. We just thought we're gonna get out and do a hike and a camp on Dartmoor. Oh some winter gear for camping. Yeah. Wanna test it out, don't I? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try my tarp, my new tarp for the first time that I got uh, at the end of August. For the first time uh, at the end of December. So yeah. it can't be a bad idea, can it? It can't be, can it? I'm sure yeah. it'll be funny whatever happens. Yeah. So we're gonna sort of look up side of sort and find a track, get up around Great Links, up that way won't we? And yeah. uh, try and find somewhere to camp out there. So we're retreading some of the old ground that we've already been over, but we looked at the map this morning. There's a couple of small tours on it that we haven't actually sort of summited done. Yep. We just, uh, the weather's a bit sort of undecided, so we just wanted to be somewhere relatively familiar and, and not too far from the motor, didn't we? Yeah. So. It's a fair old walk, I think, isn't it? So. Yeah, it's going to be sort of, uh, I don't know, 10, 11k round trip, 12k maybe, something yeah. like that. So uh, we better get a move on. Because we're eating into the day, we're in the afternoon here. Didn't have a very early start. Um, Let's ramble. Let's it? ramble. See you up there. So that's Sorton right in front of us. The track 
goes three ways from here, which is the same as exactly what it's telling us on the map. So I was instinctively going to go around the north, which will make an unnecessarily long walk of it. Uh, you wanted to go to the right, which will pass around the south of Salton. So if we just follow this around to the right, follows the boundary wall for about 600 meters, and then uh, we should come to a distinct left-hand junction. It will take us up to the uh, east face of Salton, between Salton and Corn Ridge, and from there we can join the track and head over in the direction of uh, Great Links Tour. All right, cool. Yeah, so I've had a horrendous Christmas. Fluey, temperature, chesty cough. Uh, but I come up on Dartmoor it's a couple of days ago, I was starting to feel better. I thought I'd take the kids up, played in the snow, and then I messaged Nath while I was up there. He said, we've got to do a, a hike and a camp. Last night, I got in from hiking, walked Moby, and uh, when I got back to the land of the living, I had a message from Trev saying he was all up for prepping for a wild camp on Dartmoor. Tonight, I'm going to try and camp in the tarp. So that'll be fun. I might end up breaking into Trev's tent and uh, curling up in there if it gets too harsh. We had uh, different plans. We was originally going to go up to Snowdonia, camp on a mountain up there between New Year and Christmas. But I thought, as I'm still a bit ropey, we'll do something a bit closer to home. But it's our first wild camp since June. And it's a lot milder today than it has been. Might be a bit more windier. So it'll be an interesting one. I've never done a winter wild camp before, so uh, completely out of my comfort zone. See how it goes. You've seen great links just disappearing in the sort of mist up there a little bit. Oh yeah, coming in misty. It's set to be a, um, a wet and windy winter wild camp. Makes a good title that, doesn't it? For the chat. Wet and windy winter wild camp. Wet and windy winter wild camp. Wicked. Wicked. On Dartmoor. So I've uh, layered up today, got my big warm jacket on because it's winter. I decided not to put my thermal leggings on. I've got them in my bag, I save them for when I'm camping. Yeah, I'm glad I've done that because it's uh, already this walk. I was sweating a bit. I think I'd have been too hot. I'm comfortably hot with that. <sighs> off hood, the annoying I've got brand new boots see them hey caramel when they're brand new not so dirty look like something out of Tron I love them Nate's got himself a new pack he's got a few new bits there'll be videos going up over the next few months of all this gear he's got I was just thinking how tidy his backpack looks on his back all neat all square and then you look at my backpack and it's just all wedged in a hodgepodge of squeezing everything that I can in there. I've got a new winter sleeping bag, which is a Van Gogh. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Four Seasons. Hopefully that should be warm enough. So we've just passed this junction here, which heads off to the track we want to be on, or that we keep going can take a much stronger track. Doesn't make any odds really. I mean that doesn't exactly look like a perilous route up there. In, as far as incline's concerned it would be better to go this way but more direct is that way. I mean it's it looks fairly damp and boggy. But then this is fairly damp and boggy. I don't know it's up to you. So we've walked along there. That's where we were deciding where to go and we decided we'd walk up here didn't we Nath? We walked up here, yeah. What's this? Look, Garmin. This is my uh, Garmin Oregon 200. What I'm trying to do is keep a track of average times over different terrains to work out how long it's going to take us to work a certain distance. So our average moving pace between you and me is uh, 3.6 kilometers over the terrain that we've covered. So we got 700 meters to our next waypoint which we can't see because it's beyond the crest of the hill. If we're moving at 3.6 kilometers an hour, so every 
12 minutes we're going to cover 700 meters so i'm going to set my stopwatch going now and we're going to walk straight out and see if it takes us 12 minutes roughly to get to where we're going this is learning navigation like you know so the idea is if you're navigating in low visibility so since we can't see where we're heading which is the next junction i'm going to use the timing method to see how accurate that is with an estimated average pace of 3.6 kilometers an hour to do a bit of a shout out um, for one lad he always watches our videos always comments he's a young lad he started making videos recently of his Dartmoor hiking now this lad he knows his stuff he knows Dartmoor inside and out really knowledgeable really entertaining watching his videos well edited and his name is Max of beautiful Dartmoor Max so hey up Max everyone I'll put a link in the description below you can all go over and check his channel out subscribe the other day i commented on one of his videos he done a shout in the style of summit or nothing but shouting his own catchphrase up on the top of cause and beacon so i commented on his video and said that's where we've done our very first summit or nothing shout and within seconds he replied uh no your first one was at the top of great nodden i checked it looked at the video and Yep, he was dead right. It sort of took me by surprise that someone knew more about Summit or Nothing than we did. So anyway, Max, beautiful Dartmoor. Check out his videos. Give him a sub. Tell him I sent you. And uh, yeah, enjoy. We're at this junction. It took us just under 10 minutes to get here. So considering the ease of going, you know, we probably did sort of set a better pace, probably close to four kilometers an hour, which brought the 700 meter distance time down further. the left hand bank of this stream up yep. and there should be a point where four tracks meet where it crosses the water or right. where there's a ford yeah yep. So, uh, 2017 is almost done, Nate. Yes, it is. Yeah. Enjoyed it? Yeah, it's been a big year. Big year. It's a big year for buying gear. We got out quite three times this year. No, twice. Did we? Breckens. Breckens. Uh, Lake District. The Lake District, yeah. 2018, we're hoping to do a bit more, aren't we, Nate? Yeah, gonna try and focus on mountains and have Dartmoor as the backup. Because that's what we are, summit or nothing, isn't it? It's been a slow trek to the three peaks. We're hoping to get Ben Nevis done this year. That'll be the first of our challenges complete, wouldn't it? Yeah. Then uh, what's after that? Who knows? Pyrenees, isn't it? Well, we've still got a lot of, you know, maybe go and try and do all the 3,000 footers in Britain. And then... Are you shitting me? That's Munro territory. There's like several hundred of them. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what I mean. We don't need to fly off to foreign countries just yet. We've got hundreds to do in this country. Yeah, I know, but, you know, Pyrenees, we're talking 12,000 feet. Yeah, but like you say, let's use these mountains we got in our country as the training ground for that. We used Dartmoor as a training ground to get up mountains here. And now we've got to get more confident on the mountains we've got around us before we start going on expeditions further afield.
great lynx. Beautiful beast of a tour. It's one of my highlights so far was the day we found great lynx looming like a battleship top of the horizon. This track we're on is going to take us around behind great lynx. Uh, in between Great Links and was it Grentor? We're going to find somewhere to camp along there. Long hard push to get here so far. Not over yet. Good camping here. It's nice and out of the wind here. Yeah. Well, my boots seem a lot more waterproof than my last lot. I'm happy with them. They're really comfortable. Of all places, I bought them Sports Direct. It was about 70 quid. They looked a lot better than the pair that was sort of that I was looking at for 50 and I thought let's go for it so I went for it. Sports Direct is not a place where I would have thought about looking for hiking gear. It's actually really good. Where I was shopping didn't have a great deal of choice. You got Mountain Warehouse, you got Trespass. I was looking in there for boots, they didn't have a lot of choice. I needed some new gloves and I, in those shops they were so expensive for a pair of gloves, like 30, 40 quid. And I thought, well, I don't want to spend that on a pair of gloves. Just on my way out of the town, I saw Sports Direct. And I thought, oh, I wonder if they got boots in there. And I looked in there and I bought everything in there. I ended up spending loads. I bought these gloves here. And they're running gloves, but they're like uh, warm, waterproof, 4.99. All right. You all right? I think we're still on the right track? Oh, yeah, we're still on the right track. So basically, these little markers on the map, these mean there's a steep bank and the path's in the gully, yep. and then these mean the path is raised, yeah? Mm -hmm. We're now on the section of path that's raised, and we've come out of the one that's hidden in the gully. Yep. Somewhere between the two, there is this that heads off to the right, yep. and it is right opposite Hunt Tour. I think that's Hunt Tour. Yep. So I reckon that that black, messy line there is the track that we wanted to follow that heads around the back of Great Links. Apparently there's a bleak house ruin there somewhere as well. Yeah, I see that. So, the question is, should we uh, go back up there, jump off the track and follow that now? Yep, let's do that. Let's do that then. Sweet. Foggy. So it looks like this is gonna be shit. But that's dark now, right? Isn't it? see it marked ruined building on a map you kind of take it with a pinch of salt like you're just going to find a few stones you think it's going to be like brown's hut yeah 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 that's quite a large piece of masonry still standing yeah it looks like there's a slab in there we can use as a table to put our stoves on make cool. rooms yeah let's see if we can find this footbridge shall we let's go we've got one hour until Sunset, apparently, we know, you say? That's what the GPS is saying, so it's going to be relatively accurate. Yeah. Okay, we cross there. Let's take a look at the accommodation for the evening, shall we? As Trev quite rightly pointed out from the other side of the bank, it's not particularly level in many places. Let's try and look around at the hills around us just in case. I'm not sure where I'm going to pitch here. It's a bit all over the shop the floor. Without a head torch, it's going to be a nightmare trying to walk around. You reckon we could pitch up on that? I reckon I'll get here. Yeah? You want to take that one? Yeah. Cool little building, isn't it? I can use my tarp to repair the roof for the night.
This is my first time using the uh, DD Hammock Ultralight 3x3 tarp. It's not ideal conditions for pegging it out. Uh, as you can see, not managed to achieve an ideal shape of it. And with the way this ground is here, having it pegged down tight over that should help stop the wind getting in. And it, you know, it should disperse rain. Well enough. One of the pluses is that the doorway is actually quite low, so uh, hopefully that'll keep wind and rain out. There's the banshee, the mighty banshee, making a fishing net trip for the stream. We are trying. <laughs> so here's me set up. Here's me set up. In here now, I've got me uh, self-inflating mattress. They call it self-inflating. It doesn't blow itself up, you still have to put some breath in it. I've got that and then I've got me Van Gogh Latitude 300 new, new winter a sleeping bag. Uh, I've got this on eBay, it was brand new, someone didn't want it. 35 quid plus £4.50 postage, so it was alright. Seems quite pokey in here. I forgot just how small it is. This is the second time I've camped in this isn't it? I've done three wild camps last year, not a lot was it? We both sort of struggled to get out again in the end. Hopefully this year we'll do some more, a lot more. First winter camp, so see how this goes. Okay, so uh, just come down to the river, or street, whatever you want to call it. Using the old faithful MSR trail shot, we've got these two one litre collapsible bottles, so I've just been and collected water for brews and food for the night and the morning. So hopefully now, I'm going to have to come back down to the river at any point tonight because let's face it, stumbling down here in the dark with a head torch on. I'm going to go face first into there, aren't I? With all my dry clothes on. So far, I managed to have missed the rain that Trev said was forecast for today at 3. So that's cool. Uh, but now I'm going to head back up and try and use the last of the daylight to make a brew. I'll catch you guys in a bit. Well, I'm in my tent. Just started raining out there just as we made our coffees, so I brought it in here. Well, it's half four okay. in the top, eating a banana blast track bar. The rain's just started. I think we're in for a long night. It's not raining too bad at the minute, but it's going to be heavy rain till what time was it? Heavy rain till knife? About five in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. So I don't know where I'm going to cook tea tonight. Didn't think about that. In your porch? Well, not much of a porch, is it? <laughs> How are you finding it in there, Nath? All right? Oh, mate, it's a shitload better than last time I tried sleeping under a tarp. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. You I didn't. I ended up in a car. Yeah. <laughs> We've been looking at the weather. And it gives five o'clock heavy rain coming in and it's going to be in until like four in the morning or something stupid. Basically all the way through tonight. I'm going to test the tarp out, that's for sure. And uh, I was just thinking to myself, oh, well, as long as it's rain, that's all right. And then it suddenly dawned on me to check the wind. And between eight this evening and two in the morning, they give the wind getting up as much as 45 miles an hour. It's quite cosy in here. Yeah? Yeah. It's, not, it's quite mild as well. I don't know if it's going to get a lot colder in the night. I haven't even put my thermal layers on yet, you know? I'm in the old banshee again. How exciting. Right. It's time to get changed and put on my warmer clothes. And uh, we'll see how that goes. This is going to be quite the fuss. Time is five o'clock. Hey, another fourteen hours, and the sun will be trying to come up. Fourteen or fifteen hours. Hopefully, I can sleep tonight for fourteen hours. 
Mine's kicking in out there now. I'm aiming to eat a bit later on, have me a pot of food. And I thought, 8 o'clock, sounds a good time to eat. Get some food in me just before I want to go to sleep. Keep me warm at night. Just waiting now for this wind to kick in. been half an hour. I've not gone into my uh, sleeping bag in that yet, but the temperature has just has dropped dramatically in the last half an hour. But we don't want to put all our layers on early. So we'll just see how long we can last in each condition. <laughs> time. I'm not sure what the time is in the evening but it's getting cold. It's time for a cup of coffee. I've got my thermals on, nice and wrapped up, feeling lovely and toasty inside my clothing. Just gonna have something to warm me from the inside out. Well I'm in my bag. It's about half six. So another hour gone. That's got cold. It's starting to get a bit windy out there. Are you cooking your dinner now, Nath? Yeah. I'm still going to hold off for dinner. It gives me something to look forward to. Tent's moving a bit. Which is a bit concerning because we literally... We're... There's about an inch of mud under us and then it's granite. There's no way of putting the pe pegs in properly, so... They're probably all going to pop out in the middle of the night. So that would be fun, I'm trying to sort that. I don't know how much of this is coming up audibly, but it's half six, the strong wind hasn't even supposedly kicked in yet. According to the weather report, the wind's going to get up supposedly twice what it is now. But you know, this is, if we can't survive, uh, the end of December, beginning of January, on Dartmoor, what right do we have to be on a mountain? Uh, biggest downside of the day is continually catching my beard in the zip of my jacket. You know, it was funny the first couple of times, I'm starting to wear a bit of thing now. I was uh, contemplating cooking my dinner out there in the porch area. So as you can see, the porch area is blowing in for me. Got a lot of room to cook out there. But I thought I might cook my dinner early. I wasn't going to. If I don't cook my dinner now, it's going to be harder to cook out there when the gale force winds. So, uh, yep, I'm going to cook my dinner. I'm going to have to do it half in and out the tent, which is not ideal. But shit happens. Well, it's coming up seven o'clock. The wind thus far has already felt like it's going to uh, blow the tarp out of the ground sometime in the next hour. It's going to double in speed and change direction slightly. I've had dinner, finally got into my sleeping bag, and I have to admit, I got a uh, Mountain Hardware Laminar 20 that's comfort rating down to minus 7 with a Thermarest reactor or Thermalite reactor liner. i got to be honest, it is toasty in here. I mean, it is like it's not just comfortable, it is exceptionally warm in here. What is starting to happen now though is condensation is starting to build up on the inside of the tarp and uh, when it moves it's now flicking off onto me a little bit so that's pleasant. I've got my boil on but what I'm having to do is hold my porch back while I'm cooking, see there? My fingers are <laughs> out there exposed to the elements so that's a rolling boil, you can shut everything up, shut it off, shut it up, make me dinner, and hunker down. But why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Got me dinner now. Very nice. Ten to seven, so an hour early. That's fine.
20 past seven. The wind hasn't kicked in yet. We're having moments where it's like, hard. I'll be very surprised if this tent stays up. Bottoms up. A dark rum. It's nearly nine o'clock now. The wind's, the wind's persistent. Just reading my book. I haven't heard a beep off a knife for a while. I assume he's still there. Tell in the morning, I reckon. So, situation report. It's about half nine. We're really into the into the rough stuff now. I don't know if you can see this. It's my hiking pole. Just propping up the tent. Wind speed out there is uh, the Met Office is saying it's approximately 40 to 45 mile an hour. The DD Hammocks ultralight or superlight 3x3 tarp. I mean, this is baptism of fire. It's done nothing but rain since I put it up, and the wind's done nothing but get stronger and stronger. Given the weather we've had, you could forgive it if it decided to give up now. But it hasn't. I mean, I am waiting for which component, whether it's my hiking pole or a tent peg, or a guy line, or whatever gives up first. And then I'll just be exposed here in my little bivvy bag on the side of a hill at the ass end of December. So far, so good. I don't know if you can see out there. Let's see outside of the top, look at the top moving. I'm all right at the minute, but Sooner or later, I'm going to need the pee as well, which, oh, it's going to be hideously unpleasant. This is what happens when you have to get in your sleeping bag at 8 o'clock, as you get older and your bladder gets weaker, but whatever. So how's that new sleeping bag working out for you, Trev? Yes, yeah, proper knife. I'm really hot in here. Is it all you'd hope for and more, yeah? Yeah, I'm loving it. You'll be taking that one everywhere now, then? Well, I don't know. Trouble is, it takes up half my bloody rucksack. So if you had to do a review, its functionality is good, but it could do with compressing a bit smaller. Now, of all the ones I looked at, this compresses better than a lot of the ones that this sort of price. Who did you say it was by? This is another Van Gogh product. You love a bit of a Van Gogh, don't you, boy? So I've got a Van Gogh rucksack, a Van Gogh tent, and I've got a Van Gogh sleeping bag to go with it. Summer or nothing, sponsored by Van Gogh. I want to get sponsored by Berghaus. Yeah, I don't blame you. I'd like to be sponsored by... Oh, anyone. Anyone with loads of money. Did you say Hugh Hefner? Hugh Hefner's dead, mate. He, he is now, isn't he? Think of all of those poor little bunnies that need rehoming. I know. <laughs> if you're a bunny, formerly of Hugh Hefner's, and you need rehoming, write to me in the comments below. Do you think any ex-bunnies watch? You never know, Nath, you never know. <laughs> a year ago, I'd never have contemplated fucking camping in the winter. Now look at me. <laughs> you think I'm having trouble at home or something, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'm not. That's the trouble. Donna's too encouraging. She's like, oh yeah, do what you want, yeah. <laughs> really? Because I will. I'll go out camping in the middle of winter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know why the camera just turned off then. I don't know if it was recording or not. If it wasn't recording, you're watching Nathan from Summit or Nothing. Watching Summit or Nothing whilst filming a Summit or Nothing. 
shouting our heads off. If you haven't watched the summit or nothing, watch the summit. Well, you must be watching the summit or nothing for me to, to hear me saying that. So you must have watched a summit or nothing. But watch more summit or nothing. So it's just coming up towards 11, and uh, now is actually a suitable time really to try and go to bed. I just I had to have a wee, so. But uh, I had a quick look around the tarp. All of the pegs are still in, all of the guy ropes are still down. Everything seems to be holding up pretty well. They give the wind sort of easing from here until one o'clock when it sort of drops right off. My light's attached to the tent pole, so when the light's moving, that's, that's the wind shaking the whole, whole tarp here. So I'm gonna try and get some sleep. We'll catch up with you guys early tomorrow morning. Catch you later. It's two o'clock in the morning. Wind is supposed to have died down. That's the worst of the wind that's been in my. I have slept. But this tent is getting shook about. And there's like proper cold wind gusting through. I'm hoping that the times are still good so that we're going to walk back in the dry in the morning. It's going to be a long walk in the rain else. Rough now. Quarter to five. Let's get the bash the hell out there. Four o'clock, it's here, it's gonna stop raining. The wind was meant to stop at one. It has been relentless. Right. 7.22 It stopped raining at the minute It's not as windy as it was I think it's a good time to get up make myself some porridge and some hot chocolate ready to start the day Slog home Starting to lighten up a bit now I don't know if you can see out here you can start to see the Colour coming back outside. Well, this morning I've got it's expedition breakfast. So it's like warm, not porridge, warm muesli. Quite nice, it's quite tasty. Trev's up and about now. He's got his walking pants back on. So, yeah, this is New Year's Eve, the last morning of 2017. We're going to kick 2017 into touch. And what a way to do it. Sitting on Dartmoor on a wet, Windy winter wild camp. Check boil there. Got the porridge waiting. Eat some food, have a slash, tidy up. Pack up. Well, here we are, all packed up. Ready to set back. But how was that experience for you, Nath? This was probably the worst night, noise and weather wise, I've ever spent. The tarp held up though? Yeah, the tarp held up. Really impressed with that. There, left no trace. The all important pickup, making sure you leave no trace behind. Gonna be a waterlogged old uh, walk back, I should think, the amount of rain that come down last night. I'd like to find out about this bleak house now. Who the hell lived here? What the hell went on? The stream seems a bit bigger. We're looking for a foot, foot bridge, aren't we, Nate? Yeah, foot spa. Foot spa, there it is. Pony! Oh, maybe he knows. We made it over. Yeah. It's one of the smaller streams on Dartmoor, but with that much rain, where normally you'd be able to pick a stone and just jump across, it then becomes a bit of an ordeal, doesn't it? Yeah. It's definitely worth bearing in mind if you go in Hiking on the moors in the winter is, you know, how many times your route anticipates crossing water, like, isn't it? 
and what rainfall you're gonna have overnight. Yeah, and uh, where you're pushing <coughs> up, can you get more than half an inch of your tent peg into the ground? <laughs> you can probably tell there's a lot of mist about this morning, which is gonna make navigation a bit difficult. The two tools that we're looking at heading towards, uh, higher done a goat and lower done a goat, keep appearing and disappearing in the mist. So uh, when they've shown themselves, we've taken a bearing off them. And then when we, we get to higher done a goat, we'll then set a bearing from there to Great Lynx Tour. And then from there, we can set a bearing down to the track, trying to avoid the sludgy marsh that we ended up walking through on our way here last night. Somewhere up here on this bearing, it's great links. It's invisible to the human eye today in these conditions. Not the best path. We've traded one dodgy route for another route. So, uh, I don't know if you can see this behind me, but these are the starting of the formations for great links. The strategy for this morning was to break the navigation down into easy legs. Now we know down the other side of Great Links there's a track, a decent track, that will take us pretty much right the way back to the car. But I'd like to come up and see the top of Great Links even if we can't see anything else from it. So here we are. It's just important to have good map skills to keep practicing like, you know. So uh, anyway, we're here, we're going to find the trig point and then from the trig point we're going to uh, navigate our way down to the path and then start heading back to the car. What I loved about Great Lynx is the views. See for bloody miles. Here we are. Trick point. Look at the views. Navigating in old pea soup this morning, Barnes. Off we're not going to stay up here too long because the wind's horrendous but we're going to take a bearing from this trick point, pick a mark down there that is in line with our bearing, get down there and then march from that point in the direction we want to go. Cheers Great Lynx, cheers then. Oh, it's a river for long. There's been a shit train across here. Is this the track? Looks like it could be. Not so bad, was it? I do. We found our track. Navigation is going to be easier now. We hope. No, we're just making our way back to the car. A little bit tired, a little bit worse for wear. It's been very wet underfoot this morning. The amount of rain we had last night, and they said it was going to stop at four, and at four o'clock I think it rained worse than it had all evening. There she is, sorting tours up ahead. It's been a slog this morning. But it's been one to remember, and hopefully it'll make a good video for you. We are traversing around the side of Sorton. They said, should we uh, go up and over? But uh, today I just haven't got him. <laughs> Thank you. 
How was that knife? Well, it was a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Me. That was shocking, wasn't it? It was an eye opener, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, no one can call us fair weather hikers anymore, buddy. <laughs> no. And one to bent. remember, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, I hope you lot enjoyed that. We thought we'd get out for a winter hike and a uh, wild camp. One more for 2017. Yeah. Uh, now I've got to go home, have a shower because I stink, sort out all my gear, and then get ready when we've got people coming around for a New Year's Eve party. <laughs> I probably want to go to bed by 8 o'clock. Well, you can regale them all with tales of your time on Dartmoor last night. Okay, I love that. Go, oh, for Christ's sake, he's going on about the <laughs> summit or nothing again. <laughs> so, uh, just to sort of retrack, our average speed throughout the whole walk was 2.8 kilometers according to my GPS. Total distance according to the GPS was 13.81 kilometers. And the time in which we were moving to achieve that was three hours and 28 minutes. Anyway. We put all that shit up at the end. You can have a look at the track we've done. Ugh, cheezels. Cheezels. Mm. Thank you, everyone. If you like what we're doing, please give us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all that. Yeah, let us know what you thought of this. Always good to hear from you. And we'll be doing a lot more wild camping this year, won't we, Nate? Yeah, the plan is to do more wild camping, uh, preferably on mountains if we can. Yeah. And. Um, so more mountains, more wild camping. Well, all the best for you, Nath. Yeah, and you. Happy 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 New Year, sir. Happy New Year, happy, happy New Year to you all. Lovely. Let's go home. Yes, go. <laughs> See you later. Cheers.